This is the Strengthening the National Forest Communities and Local Economies Executive Order. Paris Agreement, the economic. <coughs> I thank the gentleman for his testimony. And once again, thank you for coming. Appreciate to see you. Uh, I'm going to recognize myself for my next five minutes. Now, as you are aware, the Foundation for America's Public Lands is the official charitable, par charitable partner of the BLM. My question to you is, would you please share with the committee how the Foundation to, for America's Public Lands implements Executive Order 14072? This is the Strengthening the National Forest Communities and Local Economies Executive Order. Uh, Mr. Chair, the foundation is a separate entity from the Bureau acting as a nonprofit, so I, I couldn't speak to their activities, but I, I don't believe they're under any obligation to act on executive orders by the president as they're not part of the administrative branch or the executive branch. My understanding is they're, so they're there to support the administration they, and, and in use over the parks in that aspect. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I admittedly, um, representing the Bureau, uh, don't engage directly with the foundation. Um, they do act as a, a partner um, chartered by the Congress um, to support some of BLM's activities, but I couldn't speak to exactly how they carry out that mission. So I'm going to ask you another question. How does this work interface with the administration's national strategy for national capital accounting? Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, apologies. I am not engaged directly in the operations of the foundation um, as a separate entity, okay. so I couldn't speak to how they, they carry out that must, strategy. I'll switch gears. If adopted by the Department of Interior, the conservation leasing system and BLM's conservation landscape and health rule would impose through regulation the targets of the Paris Agreement, the economic. <coughs> objectives of ex executive orders 13990 and 14008 and the monetized national asset inventory policy being promoted by, the, by this White House. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, could hey, you re repeat the hey, question? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. apologies. Yeah, would you please share with the committee why such transformational policy changes are needed and how changes in the BLM regulations would affect the current multiple use and sustained yield inventory system required of the Secretary under the Federal Land Policy and Management Act? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you said, the proposed public lands rule is really driven by our multiple use and sustained yield mission. Um, we believe that there's an opportunity to continue to build on the great work that BLM has done for the past 50 years to ensure we're protecting the health of public lands to ensure a sustained yield for future generations of Americans. And although the proposed rule isn't finalized, we believe that tools within it, like the proposed conservation leases, will be uh, an effective tool to help uh, better support that sustained yield mission. So, so you do know that these lands are held in joint tenancy for the states and with the federal government, right? You do understand that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that I would defer to the department's solicitors on the appropriate relationship between the federal government and the states on the, the legal status of those lands. Also, like states like Arizona actually were coerced into it. were the last state they joined the union, and we were coerced by Taft to actually accept those federal lands aspects. And a lot of our budgetary aspects are determined on BLM lands, by the way, on energy and mineral uh, development as well as grazing leases, right? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman. The, as I noted in my testimony, the Bureau has a significant extra economic contribution to the, both the federal treasury and state and local government revenues. So let, let me ask you, how do you amortize uh, something like participation? Uh, the, the ranking member used this aspect of uh, participation around the world. How do you monetize that? Um, while the BLM was not involved in the development of the national strategy, um, as, I, as I noted, we definitely support opportunities to better understand the value of these resources and how we can uh, use them to support, support the Bureau's sustained yield mission. So do you actually develop them? Is, is this process going to allow others to develop these resources when we're sitting here when we can't develop these resources? Uh, the, are you referring to the conservation leasing process? Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. I'm talking about the asset program. The, the national strategy. Again, the Bureau was not involved in the development, but my understanding of the strategy um, as I prepared for this hearing is that it is uh, a 15-year phased approach. Um, so I think it would be probably a little bit premature exactly to speculate on how it might, if at all, impact land management decisions in the future. Okay. Well, it seems very awkward to me that... Uh, we're, we're amateurizing these uh, lands when our first in line is our states. 
because we utilize those, you know, as you know, in minerals in Arizona, there's get oil and gas and coal in Wyoming. So these are all very important aspects of the budgetary process that tries to maintain a balance of conservation with multiple use doctrines, whether it be energy, mineral, timber, and also leasing processes. So with that, I've run out of time, so I'm gonna hit the, the, the ranking member for her five times, so she's on a plane too. Okay, well, um, I do wanna just. Uh, Mr. Chair, the foundation is a separate entity from the Bureau acting as. I thank the gentleman for his testimony. And once again, thank you for coming. Appreciate to see you. Uh, I'm gonna recognize myself for my next five minutes. Now, as you are aware, the foundation, admittedly, um, representing the Bureau, uh, don't engage directly with the Foundation. Uh, again, Mr. Chairman, uh, apologies, I am not engaged directly in the operations of the Foundation um, as a separate entity, okay. so I couldn't speak to how they, they carry out now that must, strategy. Uh, I'll switch gears. America's Public Lands implements Executive Order 14072 for America's Public Lands is the official charitable, par charitable partner of the BLM a, and, and in use over the parks in that aspect. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I. My question to you is, would you please share with the committee how the foundation to, for my understanding is they're, so, they're there to support the administration? They have activities, but I couldn't speak to exactly how they carry out that mission. So I'm going to ask you another question. ...to act on executive orders by the president as they're not part of the administrative branch, or the executive branch. How does this work interface with the administration's national strategy for national capital accounting? 